guys, and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Dr. Rolaraba. I'm an oral maxillofacial surgery resident, and this is episode four of my weekly Q&A series. If you are new to this series, I've decided to put together the most commonly asked questions that I get through my Instagram at 15 Blades and through my YouTube comments, compile them into these weekly episodes and answer as many questions as I can under an overarching theme for the week. So if you have been watching these videos, you know the drill. If you have not, make sure you subscribe to my channel, like this video, comment below, let me know what other questions you want me to answer, and don't forget you guys, check out the other videos in the series and follow me for daily posts like this and more on my Instagram at 15blades. Let's get to this week's set of questions, mostly around productivity. Question number one, what keeps you motivated during times of burnout? This is a question I get asked so many times. I think it's because my morning videos that I very often record on my walk to the hospital are at like 5 a.m. And generally speaking, I'm pretty energetic and pretty optimistic. Um, and so I get this question quite a lot because people are like, how could you possibly be happy at 5 a.m.? Honestly, this question on its own deserves an entire like 20 minute video because it's not really something you can just answer on a whim. It's a mindset, it's kind of a lifestyle. It's something that I've actually taught myself and I am now in a nice, happy, comfortable space where I feel like I have a lot better control over my feelings, how I perceive my environment, and how I'm able to emotionally and physically handle the over, you know, encompassing subject of burnout, which is a very, very, very real thing in the field of medicine and a lot of other demanding fields out there like engineering, other STEM, even, you know, whatever your career is, even if it's not sciency or medicine, there's tons of demanding careers where burnout is a very real possibility. And so, you know, the way that I've learned to deal with it, just kind of simply put without getting too much into the details is really just your perspective. It's all about perspective. I tell myself every single day, oh my God, it's 5 a.m. I only got five hours sleep. I'm exhausted. I'm tired. I'm probably not going to be home for another 12 hours. This is going to suck. If that's how I start my day, then guess what? That's how my day is going to unravel. But if I wake up and I'm like, it's 5 a.m. I'm going to head to the hospital. Let's see what this day has in store. There's going to be a ton of surgeries. I'm super excited. I'm going to learn a lot. This is the time for me to learn as much as possible and be surrounded by mentors and people who can hold my hand and guide me. If that's my mindset, then it's a totally different experience. And when I get to the hospital, I'm already feeling positive and I'm feeling pumped for the day to come. And even if bad things happen during the day, this doesn't mean that, you know, horrible things happen and I'm just like smiling all the time because that's not normal. You have to be able to process different kinds of emotions. But my perspective on my day starting out, even if I know it's going to be a hard day, is just positive in general so that I can frame things that happen that day in a positive manner. And so um, that's really, you know, the best way for me to answer this question. But again, this question is super complicated. Lots of different things go into um, your mindset and how you can go about burnout. And so if you guys are interested, make sure you let me know in the comments below. I do read those comments. Tell me if you want me to do a whole Whole long video about burnout and what exactly would you like to know and um, you know and maybe I'll expand further on this topic okay question number two for this week is how do you manage to make time for everything okay this is definitely a misconception because on Instagram, we highlight all of the best of the best, right? I highlight all of my accomplishments, my achievements. Um, I try as much as possible to be transparent and I tell you guys when I've had a really sucky bad day, I'll tell you, you know what? Today was not so great, um, this happened. And I try to be as transparent as possible with you because at the end of the day, I really, a lot of my days are surrounding um, real life experiences that I post for you guys because I want you to see what a day in life is like like or you know a year in the life is like if you follow me every day on my Instagram and so I really you know want you to see the ups the downs so I can paint a realistic picture but at the end of the day when I'm posting my day-to-day -day, when I wake up on a Sunday and I have the day off I post a happy face a cup of coffee in front of a beautiful view um, because that's a beautiful picture and of course I'm gonna post that you know but I'm not gonna post me being super frustrated at having to do my laundry bathe Aussie go on a walk 
record content, um, you know, do some reading for my work, do research, prep for cases, all of that stuff, all on Sunday on my day off. You know, I it's not that I have time for everything. I certainly don't. Nobody really does have time for everything, but the true trick to getting through um, your day and making time for things is being somebody who can prioritize. That is the number one thing. And again, this is also a question that deserves its own 20 minute video. So if you're interested in that, let me know below. But really making time for things is not about having the time, it's about prioritizing. And so on Sunday, I always start my day with a list. I'm a list person, you guys. Chris is a list person. We're both list people and so we make lists literally like we'll wake up and be like okay time to make a list because i am all about prioritizing it'll be like priority number one two three four five because sometimes we might not get to five six seven eight but we'll make sure that we did one two three and four because those are the most important things for us to accomplish in the day and so um that's kind of a long-winded answer for a really complicated question that, that requires a lot more in a deeper dive but that's kind of you know, overall a summary of how I manage my day to day. Third question for this week, how do you deal with a lack of motivation? Okay, this is also probably one of the most common questions I get. I, I have a feeling that I get this from um, some of my Instagram family who are going through a hard time in a certain situation. So for example, if you're studying for the US Emily or you're studying for the MCAT or the DATs or whatever it is that you're studying for, at that given moment, you are going to go through ups and downs, ups and downs, and that's totally normal, you guys. Some days I feel super motivated. I am so pumped to get to the hospital and to do a really cool surgery that I've, that I've been prepping for for days and days and days. And so I am like, yes, let's go. I'm super stoked. And then some days I wake up and I'm like, oh my God, I got four hours of sleep. I'm literally exhausted. I have no days off this weekend and I have a million things to do and I'm just like, so tired and so on those days i'm not necessarily motivated but what i always try to think of and this is an advice that i would give anyone in any career in any situation always look at the big picture yeah maybe today is going to be a day that my motivation is not up to my usual standard but tomorrow things will get better because tomorrow i have something to look forward to i always have something to look forward to and that's not because i have really cool things going on in my life it's because i make sure that i put in my perspective something to look forward to so i will say okay this week, you know, today I'm not feeling so motivated. This is happening, this has been really hard. But next week, there's a huge head and neck um, flap case, for example, and I've been assigned to that case and I'm really, really, really looking forward to doing the case, learning as much as I can, helping the patient and providing the best care that I can. And for that patient, that patient ends up being my motivation for this week. And so this week will drag and drag and drag and drag and be not so exciting and be something that, you know, things are going wrong left and right and I'm just not feeling motivated. But I keep in mind, okay, next Thursday, next Thursday, I have this case that I'm really looking forward to. I gotta get through this week. I gotta do my best this week. I gotta learn as much as possible. I'm probably gonna I'm going to be asked to close and suture next week. And so I really should work on some soft tissue stuff. So things will come up where, you know, it feels like, oh, this is a waste of my time. I'm not really feeling motivated. I'm not really learning. But I'll say to myself, no, no, actually, all of these experiences are going to prep you for next week when you are going to be super excited doing this case. And so, you know, it's all about just having something to look forward to. It's all about perspective again, you know, kind of the same as what I was saying for the first question. So it's all about just your perspective and how you look at everything. And another question, I find that questions about productivity and burnout and how do you stay motivated? How do you do all of this stuff? Really difficult to answer because there's no really like one good answer there's so many different things you should be doing and it takes a really long time you guys to develop your um 
you know, to develop a system where you can be as comfortable as possible and as productive as possible and as efficient as possible. And um, that just takes time. So you have to be able to give yourself a break, give yourself some slack. There's a lot of, um, you know, trial and error in this process, but eventually you'll get into your own groove and you'll start feeling more motivated, more more positive and, and more optimistic and have things to look forward to and, it, and things will fall into place. You just have to cut yourself some slack. And so things don't happen overnight. Um, you don't become a doctor overnight. You don't become a surgeon overnight. All of that takes time. It takes patience, it takes effort, it takes dedication, and it takes perspective. And so hopefully the answer is your questions, you guys. Um, feel free to ask me more questions below. Don't forget to subscribe my, to my channel. Follow me on Instagram at 15blades, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.